Hi, my name is Peter Savini. I work for the Ceph team at Canonical, and I'm going to present Microsoft simplifying storage. Quick high-level overview, 10,000 meter overview. Uh, what is Ceph? Software-defined distributed storage. Um, you could think of Ceph as a kind of a software rate that distributes data across many different storage nodes. Ceph favors uh, reliability and consistency. In cap terms, it would be uh, consistency and uh, partition tolerance over availability and partition tolerance. Ceph is highly scalable. So you need to see in the uh, architecture diagram below, um, clients talk directly to storage nodes with no intermediary and no gateway in between that could uh, act as a pacemaker. Uh, Ceph offers unified storage. What that means is you can get block devices, you can get file systems, and you can get uh, S3 compatible object storage from Ceph. Problem statement, why micro Ceph? Well, deploying and operating a Ceph cluster is a complex thing. You have distributed components and configurations. You have a pretty complex bootstrapping or procedure and operating this cluster is also not the in, um, easy thing. Uh, hardware requirements are also non-trivial. You can just install a package on a laptop and be done. This operational complexity impacts Ceph adoption among users, um, and impacts focused and smaller users ca user ca cases primarily. What is Microsoft? Microsoft is a single package Ceph cluster. It's an all-in-one snap package four commands to get a functional cluster, three of them set up, and one to check status. And only one node required, it works on your laptop. Uh, functional Ceph install, as an example, this would be useful for testing and lab installations. You install the snap, you bootstrap a cluster, and you add some disks to the Microsoft uh, cluster. Uh, with Microsoft, we have implemented the ability to use loop files, storage backends. So what this would do is would uh, create three loop files of two gigabytes each and add this to the storage cluster. And you're done. You have a healthy Ceph cluster with three simulated OSTs running. A few words around the snap package, uh, snap package format. Uh, snap packages isolate all the user land in a single package. You just need a kernel, network, and block devices from the host system. This gives you a consistent environment across operating system and access to the host is confined for safety, security, and robustness reasons. Snaps are easy to build and easy to distribute. You could put a snap package on an USB stick and go to an offline site with it. Snap standardized risk through channels. In Microsoft, we use three. You would have the stable channel where we publish uh, production ready snaps. You would have the candidate channels for release candidates um, so you could use that to test upgrades, for instance. And you have the edge channel where all the development happens. So um, every time we push um, a pull request, uh, the um, edge channel gets updated and you can test the very latest and greatest. A uh, little bit about Microsoft architecture. We have a service management daemon that talks to a cluster database where configuration is stored and which uh, manages the Ceph daemons and uh, a CLI command line interface that connects to the Microsoft service daemon through an API. Um, yeah, the service management exposes an API. Everything you can do with Microsoft, you can do through the API. All the interactions like enabling, disabling, migrating services, querying block device info, adding, removing this, et cetera, et cetera. Everything through the API, which is very useful for integration. And the command line interface is just another API client. A few words around scalability. We have already seen Microsoft scales down very well. You can go with a single node and a single disk. And for scaling up, we implemented automatic failure domain rules. That, uh, this means that uh, the Ceph crush rules are automatically adapted from a single node, OSD level failure no domain to a multi-node host level failure domain as a cluster grows. Also, in the other way, if you scale down a cluster, the failure domain with go, will go with it. What this means is that single node clusters work out of the box, and as you scale up, you get added safety automatically. 
Larger failure domains are available via custom cross rules. Um, that's implemented in Ceph. Micro Ceph itself doesn't have a concept of rooms or X or any other larger failure domains, but it won't interfere with custom crush rules if you need them. How far can you scale up? Well, um, Ceph itself has excellent scalability and Micro Ceph is mainly bound by the raft algorithm of the configuration database. Um, Performance-wise, we have basically have the same performance characteristics as Ceph. Microsoft is not sitting in a data path for any I.O. requests, so it excels at high bandwidth and highly parallel I.O. Um, and uh, yeah, um, low bandwidth, uh, low latency I.O. is a little bit more challenging. Same as uh, with uh, Ceph itself. How would you consume um, storage from Microsoft? Uh, already noted that we have uh, three three types of storage here, block devices, file systems, and object storage. Firstly, I'm going to talk a little bit about object storage. Uh, with the Raiders Gateway, we have an S3 compatible object storage, and we ship management and tooling for that RGW services in Microsoft. Enabling uh, RGW daemon on a single node is as easy as Microsoft enable RGW, and that gets you set up with an uh, Radius Gateway on the, this node. We also package the standard Radius Gateway admin tool uh, for zone configuration, user creation, managing services, etc. Accessing the Radius Gateway would be with the standard S3 clients like S3 command, Boto, etc. How would you uh, get the block device? Uh, this is where RBD comes into play. RBD is the Redis block device system. Um, support for block devices is available for Linux, Kubernetes, OpenStack, LibWord, LXD, Windows, and via NVMe over Fabric. One caveat for the Linux uh, kernel, the RBD program that comes with Microsoft uh, can for security reasons not access the kernel. So for uh, creating block devices there, you would need the distribution package. We saw a little bit uh, a small cluster for uh, local development already. How would you go with uh, into production with Microsoft? First thing is Ceph of scale. We already saw that uh, there's a three node minimum recommended for safety uh, for Ceph, and same goes for Microsoft. For Microsoft, you would inhibit the default automatic snap upgrades, so you can perform no downtime iterative upgrades with uh, Ceph. You have uh, tools to um, place services. You can scale services up and down individually as you require. Um, we also support NVMe, WAL, and DB devices for performance. Um, security feature-wise, we support separate public and cluster networking in Microsoft, Kubernetes isolation, and also throughput. We also support RGW SSL TLS frontends, and we have built-in built -in full disk encryption for data disks. So this covers Microsoft in production. I'm going to demo a short, uh, do a short demo for a six node cluster and how to configure Redis Gateway object storage and how to get an RPD volume from it. We assume we have uh, six nodes already configured, so we can SSH into each of every one of them. And yeah, so uh, I have uh, sped up this demo a little bit so that you don't have to wait for downloads and things like this. So we're going to SSH in a for loop into each of the nodes and do a snap install Microsoft here. Uh, by default, we're getting the current stable release, which is Reef. And then once it is done, uh, we're going to set up a bootstrap this, this cluster. Bootstrapping happens on a single node, like with a, with a single node setup before, we are going to issue a Microsoft cluster bootstrap command. Uh, we could have used any one, any node here, but I'm choosing node zero for this exercise. Yeah, and checking status here, you see we have a single node in there with uh, three services running and zero disks. So now we're going to join the rest of the nodes in here. So the way we do this, we get first we get the token that uh, embeds credentials for uh, allowing the, the node to join. We do this by uh, 
running cluster add on the first node and then on each of the other nodes we are going to issue a common cluster join using the token that we got before to allow the node to join the cluster. So once this is done, rerunning the status, just to prove we have uh, now six nodes in the cluster. And here we are. We see that the first three nodes got services. All of them could have disks, um, but we have no disks at all in here for now. So let's add some disks. Uh, I gave each of those nodes two disks. So we're adding SDB and SDC, the two disk devices. And we do this by issuing a Microsoft disk add command for this. Again, iterating over all the nodes in the cluster. Getting a short message for each of the nodes. We successfully added two disks here. So that's great. Checking status again. Yeah, we are now have two disks each and the Ceph status. We now have health decay and 12 um, OSDs in total as it should be. As a next step, we're going to enable Radius Gateway. Um, could use any node again, but I'm choosing node zero. And this is reflected in the status output as well. And now in the next step, we're going to create the user for Radius Gateway and set uh, some secrets on it we can use later on. I have prepared uh, a configuration for the S3 command. Um, we didn't uh, install any SSL certificates, so I've turned uh, SSL certificates off here and gave it a host base of node zero. So with the S3 command, we're going to test now if our Radius gateway actually works. First, making a bucket, just naming it my bucket here. Yeah and successfully created a bucket. Now let's upload some image to it. Into this bucket. And that's a success as well. Uh, let's download it via curl. Yeah, curl refuses to uh, put this to standard out. So I'm grateful for that. Let's save it into a file. And just to see if we actually got the correct file, going to um, compare this with diff and yet yeah, diff didn't um, mention any differences between two files. So these are indeed uh, the same binaries. And the second step, uh, we are going to enable Redis, uh, a Redis block device and use it as a local block device. To do this, we need to install a Ceph client um, here on this machine and uh, configure um, some Ceph configuration uh, the minimal self configuration we have here is just pointing it at the mon host, um, pointing it at node zero. We have uh, three hosts that uh, are running monitors, so we could add those uh, other two as well. But for simplicity, I just took the first one. So um, to ex actually access these nodes, I also need credentials. Uh, we're going to do some administrative steps here as well. So I'm just grabbing the keyring of the admin from Microsoft and putting it into a local file where the Ceph clients can find it. So here it is and written to a well-known location. Yeah, with this, I can run a Ceph client locally, access status here. Again, we can see health is okay, so that's fine. Um, now, um, listing the pools we have in Ceph, we can see there's some Redis Gateway related pools, but we don't have an RBD pool yet. So let's create one. It's a small pool only. Let's give it 16 page groups. Next, enabling the application RBD for this so that we have uh, RBD here. Uh, we're checking if there's anything in the pool, RBD LS. There's naturally, there's nothing in there yet because we haven't created anything. So let's create an image. Uh, so RBD create my image. With a size of four. And yeah, that's actually a typo. I just need to see RBD create image. And here we are, showing some details about this image. And uh, yeah, so let's actually make use of it. And this is done by the RBD map command. This maps the remote image 
into a block device on the local system on my notebook here. So we got the block device here, RBD0. And just to see if it works, create a file system on it and put a little bit of data on it so that we can see, um, we can verify functionality. And I can also check its size. We made the image four gigs. It's reporting almost four gigs. So that's nice. Yeah, creating a file works as well. So this looks good. Yeah, um, the RBD and Ceph binaries we used here are from uh, the Ceph common package that I just installed on this machine. Um, yeah, as a final step, I'm going to show how to uh, inhibit refreshing the snap automatically because typically for a production environment, at least you would want to uh, make this an explicit step so you can um, do it in a sequential fashion. And the way you do is uh, you SSH into each of the nodes and issue the snap refresh minus minus hold command for the Microsoft snap. And this will prevent um, any automatic snap refreshes. That was all for this demo. Uh, yeah, we set up a six node cluster and made it available for object storage and block devices. So next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about Microsoft integrations. So this means uh, which projects that make use of Microsoft and how you could integrate this into your clouds. First up, um, there's Sunbeam, the OpenStack on Kate's project from Canonical, which makes use of Microsoft internally. You can also make use of Microsoft together with MicroKates to provide storage for a Kates cluster. And similarly for LXD and MicroCloud, also providing storage for these cloud environments. I'll talk uh, about the Juju integration in a bit. Um, last but not least, we have a small Microsoft action that provides S3 for your CI workflow. Um, Juju Charm Microsoft. Juju is the orchestration engine created by Canonical um, that uh, allows you to deploy um, cloud components with uh, operators. And there's a Charm Microsoft operator we implemented for Juju, um, which would uh, provide storage integration for OpenStack, Kubernetes, and other cloud components. Just as an example, this is how you would deploy a six node Microsoft cluster via Juju. That is Juju deploy Microsoft, give it the number of nodes you want to use and some storage options. Short look at what's next. We're currently working on disaster recovery for Redis block devices that would provide Microsoft uh, with uh, remote cluster awareness. That means you could um, manage one cluster from another and uh, in the next step, provide RBD mirroring support in Microsoft. This means you could mirror RBD block devices from one cluster to another cluster for disaster recovery purposes for failover workload migration. So these are the things we are going to implement there. And those could be either journaling or snapshot based depending on your requirements. A look farther ahead, uh, we will create a squid release for the upcoming Ceph major release. This will be an LTS release for Microsoft. So long-term su support for the snap. And uh, we're done future work. We are looking to implement hardware acceleration via Intel QAT in Microsoft, so to give uh, Radis Gateway encryption and compression support via hardware. That's all for this talk. Thank you for listening. Get in touch via Matrix. I've left the URL here. Here's some more resources to get more uh, details about Microsoft. Thanks again, and see you around.